everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I have my Sony a7C set up for photography. So I'm gonna take you through and show you how I've used all the buttons as shortcuts for particular settings that I use every day when I'm out doing photography on this camera. I'm also gonna show you what focus settings I use and we're gonna take a look through the menu as well. So today we have a fun setup. I have a camera, we have B camera over here and we have ninja camera as well. First thing I wanna do is take you guys through the outside of the camera and show you how I've set up all my custom buttons. Something that I read about a lot in the comments and online in general is that a lot of people say that the a7C doesn't have enough buttons. But I found over the last few months of using this camera that I've been able to put in any setting that I need for photography into one of these custom buttons. So I'll show you guys how I have it set up and maybe it'll give you some ideas as well. So starting off with the basics, this is obviously the shutter button. <laughs> and my mode dial is pretty much always set to manual when I'm doing photography, you have your recording button and the exposure compensation dial I don't use for photography but I do use it for video which by the way I am working on the video version of this video which will be out in a couple of days it'll be quite a shorter video than this but if you're interested I'll upload that really soon as well coming around to the back of the camera this is my shutter speed dial and this ring here controls my aperture Normally when I'm using particular lenses, such as now with the Zeiss 50 1.4, this has its own aperture ring on the lens. So typically I'll just use the lens aperture ring instead of the shortcut. But if I don't have the aperture ring on the lens, then I'll use that shortcut on the back of the camera. Next up, we have the AF on button. This is my shortcut for IAF, which I'll show you guys how I use this a little bit later on when we talk about the focus settings. Then in my dial, if we press upwards, we have the standard display function which you can kind of filter through all of them. I usually just have it on the blank screen. I just prefer what that looks like and not having heaps of icons distracting me while I'm shooting. And if we press to the right, I have my shortcut for white balance. So if I press to the right, I can then easily change my white balance to whatever I need it to be. When I press down on the wheel, we have a shortcut for ISO. And when we press left, I have a shortcut for drive mode. And then we have our standard play button, which will play back all the photos that I took. You guys know what that button does. And then I have the trash button, which is my shortcut to switch between the viewfinder and the LCD. So I feel like the a7C is a very touchscreen heavy camera with like the focus point and subject tracking and things like that. And because I'm usually gripping my camera with my right hand, I always go in with my left hand to touch the screen. So when I do that, if I have it on automatic to switch between the two screens, then my finger will constantly black out the LCD screen, which I find super annoying. So instead of having that be automatic, I've switched it to the trash button as a shortcut. Which by the way, that little shortcut is a shortcut that I use for all my Sony cameras and the same goes with the white balance shortcut as well. I've got that on all my Sony cameras. The final button we have on the back of the a7C is the function button and Dan's gonna kill me, but it is the function button <laughs> because you have every shortcut that you would need for photography so you don't have to go into the actual menu pretty much ever. Okay, so let's take a look inside the function button. <laughs> so first we have the drive mode, which I have on single shooting. Next up, we have the focus mode. So with my focus mode, I pretty much always have it on continuous autofocus because I like to shoot a lot of movement with my photography and also the IAF and subject tracking on the a7C is so strong. I do love to keep it on continuous autofocus. So the camera is always keeping focus on my moving subject. Next up, we have the focus area and I pretty much always keep it on wide since I am normally on the a7C relying on the IAF and the subject tracking to keep my subject in focus. Another focus area that I like to use is a small flexible spot. So when you select that, you get a little focus point. So using the small flexible spot is something that I actually do a lot more with the Sony a7 III. So while the IAF is pretty good on that camera, it is not as strong and as sticky as the a7C. So I always like to keep a small flexible focus point on my model's face or my subject's head or something. So when I'm taking portraits and you can see their face, the IAF works really well. But then if someone turns their head to the side or does a spin and you can only see the back of their head or if they 
hair kind of covers their face. The IAF is obviously not going to work because you can't see the eyes in the shot. So that's when I have the small flexible focus point to kind of save me and be able to capture those moments. But that is still not the reason that I use a small flexible focus point on the A7C. So uh, just to backtrack a little bit, when I'm taking photos of a subject and we're doing a lot of movement and spinning and I can't see their face a lot of the time while we're shooting, I will actually tap on the LCD to get subject tracking to work on that person. So I'm gonna ask Dan to step into the frame that we have set up here with the camera. So I've selected the small flexible spot and a shortcut that I have set up is if I press the middle button and then I can use the buttons of the dial to move my focus point around. And I can also use the touch screen if I want as well. So I'm gonna move the focus point down here to the tripod and hold down the shutter button. So as you can see, it's locking off focus on the tripod. And then if I press my shortcut AF on, which does my eye autofocus, oops, <laughs> and it will now focus on Dan instead. So I can really easily just switch between the two. Oops. <laughs> Next we have right slash left eye select. To be honest, I don't really use this that much, but it is there in case I need it. I find that instead of having to go into the menu on the A7C, if it's focusing a lot on someone's right eye and I want the left eye to be in focus, I'll usually just tap on the screen on the left eye, which will enable the subject tracking on that particular eye. So I find that's a lot quicker to do than having to go into this function menu, but it's there just in case I need it. Next, we have the autofocus tracking sensitivity, where you have a number between one, which is locked on, two, three, four, and five, which is responsive. So I normally like to have it on one, which is locked on. I know five and responsive sounds like it's really good, like it's going to be fast autofocus, but I find that on responsive, the autofocus is actually less sticky than it is on locked on. So if you've got a lot of people in your frame and you have your sensitivity set to five, it will actually jump the autofocus point from person to person in the frame. Whereas if you have it on locked on, and you've got the IAF on your main subject, it will just kind of ignore everyone else in the frame and mostly keep the focus on that subject. Then we have metering mode, which I have it set to multi. And then I also have a shortcut for silent shooting, which I normally have off, but sometimes when I'm traveling or taking like daily photos, I like to have that option to be able to silent shoot. Maybe I'm like taking photos of my cat Evie sleeping and I want to have it on silent mode. I also have a shortcut for anti-flicker, which I normally have on. Speaking of Evie, next we have subject detection, which is a quick little shortcut between human and animal IAF. Next I have steady shot focal length. This I only use with vintage or cine glass and I'll import what the focal length is into the camera. That way the IVAS can accurately stabilize my shots. Next I have live view display, which I only use when I'm using flashes. And last but not least, I have aspect ratio, which is on three by two, but I do have it as a shortcut here because I use this camera a lot to shoot my thumbnails for YouTube and the thumbnail ratio is actually in 16 by nine. So I'll switch it quickly to 16 by nine so I can see my composition and see how the final shot will look like. And also because I shoot in RAW, once you import the photos into Lightroom or your editing software, you still have the full three by two crop of the image as well. So it's not like burnt in 16 by nine, but yeah, I find that really handy to have here. So that is all the shortcuts and everything that I have set up on the buttons on the outside of the camera. So as you guys can see, we don't really have a lot left to go through in the menu, but I do want to just quickly run through the menu with you guys as well and just point out a couple of things that weren't here in shortcuts or on the buttons. Let's dive into our menu. So file format, obviously I have it set to raw. I shoot raw like 99% of the time. I have my raw file type as uncompressed and then JPEG quality extra fine, JPEG image size the largest and oops, my aspect ratio needs to be back at three by two. And I have the APS-C 
switched off. So why I said 99% of the time in RAW is because sometimes I do shoot in RAW plus JPEG, especially when I'm doing a camera body comparison and I really want those straight out of the camera JPEG files to compare to. Next, we have our color space, which is set to sRGB. My entire workflow from my camera to my computer is all set to sRGB. Also, while we're flicking through the menu, I also just wanted to mention and remind you guys that if you are kind of looking at something, you're like, oh, I'm not sure what that does. You can actually hover over that menu item and select the trash button and it'll pop up with a more detailed description of what that function does. So that can be really handy. Here in color, I have my dynamic range optimization and picture profile set to off. If you shoot in raw, these things don't really matter as you can change it afterwards in post. It's only important if you shoot in JPEG or if you're shooting video. In this menu is where I've customized every single key on my camera camera and also the function menu as well. With the function menu, I have one menu for photography and one menu for video, depending where the mode dial is on. In the next custom menu, we have the function of touch operation, which is currently grayed out because I'm plugged into the Ninja but this is where you can enable the touch to subject track function that I use all the time when I'm doing photography. It's a little bit difficult to find, so I wanted to just point that out for you guys. Last but not least in the menu, we have my own customized menu. These are for items that I don't use often enough to have as a customized button on the actual camera, but I do use often enough that it is more convenient to have them in their own menu rather than having to go through the entire menu to find what I need. One more thing that I wanna show you guys, I'm always like one more thing, is that if you take a photo, I'm just gonna take one of that and hit play, I've got two more shortcuts set up. So if I press the function button, it will automatically send that photo that I'm looking at to my phone. So it'll bring up the QR code that I can then connect my phone to and send the image to my phone. The other shortcut that I have, which is way more fun than that one, is if you're in playback and you hit the record button, this will bring up the FTP transfer function where you can send all the photos that are on that memory card to the NAS, to the server that I have at home. But yeah, that is it for my shortcuts, my focus settings, my setup of the Sony a7C. It's a tiny camera, but with like a lot packed into it. And I feel like I'm really happy with the way that I have it set up. I would love to know if you guys found any shortcuts or tips that you're going to use on your camera. And also let me know if you guys have any shortcuts um, that I possibly missed out on and could add to my camera as well. But I hope you guys found today's video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or ideas in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.